Hi, you're watching Life Intelligence. I am Valentina. Are you feeling drained, manipulated, emotionally exhausted from all the drama in your relationship with your narcissistic partner? And you want to leave them, but you don't know how, you don't know what to do. Leaving a narcissist can be very difficult, but also the most liberating decision and action you can take. Today we're going to talk about how to leave a narcissist safely, strategically, and with your dignity uh, intact and with your integrity intact. We'll start by understanding what to expect when you finally decide to tell your narcissistic partner that you are leaving, how to prepare to leave, the steps to take, and what to do afterwards. So recognizing the signs of narcissistic abuse and taking steps to leave can can be life saving emotionally saving if you stay in a relationship with a narcissist for too long you will be forever damaged it is very difficult to recover so the sooner you wise up to the situation and the sooner you make this decision the better and yes i do recognize that not everybody can leave a narcissist we'll have a separate video about what to do if you live with a narcissist and you absolutely cannot leave them for whatever reasons but today we're assuming that you want to leave them and here's what you need to think and how to prepare so I'm not going to define what a narcissist is I'm assuming if you're here you already know that you're with one whether you're dating them or you're married to them if you want me to do that type of a video with all the characteristics of narcissism and how they show up in real life, put that down in the comments. I will do that in another video. Uh, but in short, narcissists have an insatiable need for uh, attention, admiration, validation, and they, are, they have an inflated sense of self-importance because uh, on the inside they just feel like they're not good enough they're not lovable, they have a big hole inside of them that they're overcompensating for that with this facade of grandiosity and charisma and so on and so forth. Uh, but, you know, that comes with uh, an opportunity cost. <laughs> the opportunity cost is sincerity. So a lot of what they put out in the world is fake, but very convincing. Um, so they're very manipulative. And they're very stressful to be around. Um, so another video that I have, I just recently published uh, what it feels like to be in a relationship with narcissists. I'll put that link down below in the description. You can watch it later and I'll put it at the end of this video. So if you want to know what that is, so you're not sure where you stand, that's a good video, a good resource. Um, for now, I just want to point out three types of narcissists there. You can break them down in other categories, but the three main ones that I want to focus on is the overt narcissist. And, and, and be, um, before I tell you all three, um, the reactions you're going to get from them are in the same ballpark, but just different intensities and different types of narcissists will like use some, some things more than others, so to speak. So um, none of them will take, uh, rejection very well uh, this the, to tell them that that you're leaving is to tell them that they're not good enough that they have some faults and that you don't like them anymore and that cuts deep for all of us but especially for them because they can't they're not full within themselves and then you're basically rejecting them so expect drama um, so okay the three types of narcissism narcissists that I want to focus on are the overt narcissists. So that's the classical narcissist in your face. Um, they're very arrogant, entitled, overly manipulative, but also charismatic, eloquent, and often they look really good. They're like amazingly looking. <laughs> Well-groomed, good physique. They usually have good jobs and, and that sort of thing. Um, then the covert narcissist is a little trickier. Uh, they're more subtle, passive-aggressive types. Um, they appear humble, caring, and they kind of covertly manipulating and controlling you. They like to guilt trip you um, while at the same time appearing agreeable and caring. 
uh, indebting their victims to them. <laughs> so you feel like you owe them something. <laughs> Often um, they derive their sense of specialness, uniqueness, and superiority through claims for mistreatment. So they like to be the victim. Uh, they claim to be misunderstood and overlooked and that kind of makes them special and elicits sympathy from others. Then there's the worst kind, possibly the malignant narcissist. So they're kind of like the classical narcissist, but really dangerous because they combine those classical traits with uh, aggression and violence and vengefulness and cunningness. Oh, they're awful. Uh, they, they can be pretty um, dangerous, especially when you tell them that you, you're about to leave them. So expect from them, um, with the variation on the theme, depending on which kind that is, some similar behaviors. So the first one would be the narcissistic rage. Um, more dangerous in the malignant narcissist because they will rage in such a way. It's not just anger. It's not just rhetoric. It's not just yelling, screaming, and fights. They can actually physically injure you. They can be physically abusive. Um, expect threats to your safety um, for ruining threats, for ruining your life, uh, taking your kids, um, your house, screwing up your finances and through between the threats, the threats are sprinkled with cruel, demeaning comments, um, sarcasm and put downs. That's basically the narcissistic rage. It's the narcissist attempt to regain control. They hate feeling out of control. So they're trying to power over you. Then denial and, minimi in, and minimizing. They will deny and minimize any and all wrongdoing. Therefore, they will not accept responsibility. Therefore, don't expect them to apologize. Uh, probably make you out to be the reason for their behavior and their wrongdoing. And so those turn the script around. Um, yeah, so definitely do not expect a sincere apology. You may just get one verbal one just to appease you, but no, they won't feel it. Remember, they have no empathy, so how are they going to apologize? Then withdrawal, another strategy that they will use on you would be to give you the silent treatment, um, stonewall you, and therefore deny you the opportunity to have the conversation but also hook you into the, the dynamics so you keep sort of pursuing them and chasing them to say what you need to say um you know that way they still get attention from you um but it's also a way to punish you and they have like a they all try to punish you one way or another. <laughs> and then guilt tripping. So again, that's like the forte of the covert narcissist. But not only. They all know these tricks and use these tricks. Um, they're, they're the ones that will flip the script on you and make, and, and make themselves out to be the victim. Like, I've done so much for you. How can you do this for me? You're ungrateful. And, you know, I've invested all this time, I bought us the house, I did this, I did this, and now you're going to leave me, how can you do this to me? And that can become extreme to a point where they can threaten to harm themselves. If you leave me, um, you know, I can't live without you, if you leave me, I'll kill myself. They'll go as far as faking illness. Some, <laughs> some have faked cancer so that you would stay and take care of them. Some have quit their jobs, claimed that they got fired, so you wouldn't leave them because, you know, you're not going to leave them after everything they've done for you. You're not going to leave them when they're down. Um, so all kinds of stuff like that. Um, that's, again, their attempt to elicit sympathy and to keep you where you are so you won't leave. Um, they will also try to future fake and make promises that they don't intend to keep. So basically trying to bargain with you. If you stay, then blah, blah, blah. Um, they can promise to quit whatever they're doing, cheating, gambling, I don't know, whatever behavior 
They all promise to take anger management classes, anything. <laughs> they have no intention of following through. You'll find out if you decide to stay and see how long you can wait for any of those things to come through. Um, so the other thing they'll try to do is they'll try to hover. They will go into damage control mode. So they will try to be extra nice, do nicer things for you, showing you more attention, um, reminding you of the good times, um, and even appear totally reformed. And so you started believing them, right? Um, and again, this is their attempt to uh, change your mind, um, but it's only temporary and you'll find that out if you decide to stay. It's part of this cycle. Um, they have a crazy fear of abandonment. It's their worst fear. So they'll do anything it takes to keep you there. Even if they don't like you. <laughs> Even if they have affairs on the side. They're not just going to roll over. If you're the one that wants to leave. Oh my God. Um, so that fear of, aban of abandonment is motivating a lot of this manipulative behavior. Um, there, it will lead to desperate attempts to keep you from leaving. So therefore, expect lots of drama. Um, they will, the, in the case of the malignant narcissists, they might go as, as far as literally restricting you from going anywhere. They'll lock you in the house, take your keys, take your phone. Um, it could become pretty extreme. Then there's the paranoia. Again, that's uh, common for all three types, but the malignant and the classical more so than anything because they can't accept the possibility that there's anything wrong with them. They might become paranoid that you have something else on the side. You're leaving them for somebody else or you're acting because you're under someone else's influence. And so they will start to, uh, they, they will want to control what you do, where you go, who you talk to. They want to see uh, your communications, your text messages. They're going to monitor you on social media, so on and so forth. Um, they're trying to establish a control over the situation by establishing control over you. And then the worst part in, in what to expect would be retaliation. And obviously, again, the malignant narcissist would be the worst kind because they're more cunning. They hold grudges for a lot longer. But all of them have their own ways of retaliation. It could become physical, but it could be them um, sabotaging your future relationships or sabotaging you at work or bad-mouthing you to your friends. Um, they might, um, the, the retaliation might show up as a protracted, prolonged, unnecessary, so legal battle for, for your kids or your properties. So they'll, they'll find a way to punish you and retaliate. Um, so those are things to expect and be prepared for when you tell a narcissist that you are leaving them. Um, but again, prolonged exposure to a narcissist um, leads to serious mental health issues, even serious trauma, um, PTSD types of sy symptoms, act actual PTSD, um, and it can definitely affect your health. So all that stress will manifest as health issues for a lot of people, extreme gain of weight or extreme loss of weight, uh, harmful behavior like using drugs or, you know, because you're trying to numb yourself, alcohol, um, can't sleep, anxiety, um, heart issues like high blood pressure, um, all kinds of things. So this is serious. So again, if you absolutely cannot leave a narcissist okay we'll have another video about that but if if you are thinking of leaving one and you have good reasons remember prolonged exposure is really harmful to you um if you think you're ready to leave um Remember what I just described, what to expect from their behavior. Things can get dangerous and it can, this is definitely going to be an emotional roller coaster. Um, 
and if your partner if you even suspect that your partner could be violent um, you have to put things in place ahead of time to protect yourself uh, and you have to have a safety plan and this might include uh, you know having that conversation with your narcissistic partner outside of your dwelling in a public place or with a friend present or you know you have to think of a good way to do this to protect your safety you might uh, you know even alert uh, alarm the authorities um, so first you need to be discreet about your planning you can't tip them off too early because you are gonna unleash this emotional roller coaster and drama and and just un, unpleasant way of living for a long time uh, and so you need to do all your planning and preparation in secret until you have everything in place and you're ready to go um, then one of the first things you need to do is uh, gather support from friends and family and organizations and um, therapists so they can help you establish an actual workable step-by-step -step and give you the emotional support and also give you the outside perspective so because you're gonna this is not gonna be easy you're gonna self-doubt a lot you're gonna wonder whether or not you're making the right choice so Ha and the uh, narcissist is manipulative so especially if they get tipped off early on they're going to change their behavior and it's going to get even more confusing so you need that outside viewpoint perspective and emotional support to um to pull this off um your friends and family therapists so on can validate your feelings um because the narcissist won't <laughs> and then you need to document all the abuse so start a journal put a file on your computer whatever make sure the narcissist never finds it out so your evidence stash needs to be super secret but in it is like communication stuff text messages videos anything you can use as proof for two things a you might need it legally b being in moments of weakness when you start thinking that you might have done something you know you're stupid why am i doing this look at your evidence stash <laughs> this is why you're leaving this person <laughs> and um, then start creating your clear exit plan so that's like the step-by-step -step thing and the very first thing you need to do is secure your finances so that means you need to open a separate bank account you need to have your own money um, you know you cut them off from your credit cards if you're together on the credit cards you get your own credit cards you need to have your finances in place and all your important documents passports birth certificates social security whatever everything that is important documents because in one way they can keep you from leaving is taking your stuff you become a hostage literally um, so it's not just about leaving it's about leaving it's about leaving in a way that minimizes the risk physical mental emotional risks to you while you maximize your chance of being gone not going back um when you have everything in place uh so in in that in that space of sorry after you do your finances you also have to secure a place to live so whether you're going to rent another house or you have a relative you can stay with, are you going to take your kids with you? Sometimes you have to leave with your kids, <laughs> and especially if they're little ones. You're not going to leave them over there with a the narcissist. I mean, everybody's got a different situation. But if you have to take your kids, you have to take that into consideration too. Are you going to move them to a different school? Are you going to um, go to a different town? So you got to think of those things and put them in place before you tell the narcissist because when you tell the narcissist you need to be able to just leave at that moment so you need to have a place to stay you have to have your finances in place and you have to have your social network emotional support network in place so that you you can actually pull this off um then when you tell them you, you gotta decide how to tell them right you got everything in place you have to tell, you have to decide how to tell them so you know where would be a good place to talk about this uh how to tell them 
these are things you need to consider based on the person's character on whatever you guys' lifestyle and all that whether or not they're violent you need to consider all this um, and then ignore the pleading because they will immediately start pleading and some of them will start crying and all that stuff um, just say what you need to say and leave <laughs> physically immediately if possible now if you think you can first tell them that you want to leave and then start working on your plan to leave you're just opening the door to more drama because all the behaviors we talked about with the hovering and the manipulation they're gonna try to keep you from leaving so you're just gonna put yourself in a protracted state of emotional distress for no particular reason probably amplified because they know you want to leave so things can get more confused they'll find a way to keep you from leaving so if you want to increase your chance for leaving you have to be like i'm telling you i'm leaving and goodbye <laughs> or or like the least amount of time between you telling them and actually physically leaving the door the better like immediately is best <laughs> So if you're dating, that's super easy. Meet in the park, tell them don't call me anymore and move on. But if you are married and have kids, you have to have all this other stuff in place like we talked about. And then establish a no contact rule because remember, they're going to muddy your mental space. They're going to try to influence you, manipulate you, confuse you. So um, the least contact you have with them, the best. Now, not everybody can do no contact. Like if you have children, investments together, properties, obviously if you have to go through divorce, you have to have some communication. Limit the communication to only those things. Kids, lawyers, properties, that kind of stuff. No other communication. They will try. They will try to text you. They'll try to like bring you back, get you interest. They'll hover some more. They'll try to turn. They'll do everything they can. They'll just know they use all their tricks on you. So no communication is best. If you can't do no communication, then limit communication to only absolutely necessary stuff and stick to it. That's your boundary. Don't let them cross it. No communication block them, uh, social media, text messages, emails, uh, change the locks on the doors. If you left physically to another house, don't tell them where you live. Uh, tell all your coworkers if they show up not to, not to tell, you know, not to give any information about you. You just make yourself disappear from their lives completely and then erase them from your life completely. Uh, stay strong and don't entertain any other fishing expeditions that they may throw at you because they will they'll find ways so they'll at least try and then understand it's going to be hard especially if you're used to the interaction with that person you're probably used to high intensity living so to speak like in a bad way you know the constant drama the cycles um you know the fights and the makeups and all that and they will try to make it as hard as possible for you to leave. They, they don't just roll over and give up. You just hurt them. You hit them where it hurts the most. Um, if necessary, consider restraining orders, legal advice, everything you can to arm yourself in order to succeed. Um, then let's say you got this far you physically left uh, what to expect from yourself you're gonna feel lonely from time to time you're gonna remember the good times um you know you're gonna feel weak at times so like look at your evidence stash why you left them <laughs> remember the bad times and the fights not just the good times and you know healing and recovery take time uh, uh, try to find a therapist, uh, a coach, a trusted friend, a few family members, anything, anyone that can help you bring yourself a little strength and make you and kind of like fill up your own cup. Um, super important to tackle your physical health first because as you improve your physical health, so will your emotional strength and um, that will increase your chance of not going back to that person. 
I understand you were traumatized. Uh, living with a narcissist, especially for a long time, is traumatizing. So it will take you a while to sort yourself out psychologically. Uh, look for support groups. But one of the greatest ways is to actually reach out and make yourself available to others who are going through what you went through. By helping them, you help yourself and everybody helps each other. And it's a constant reminder for you why you left and to stay strong. Seeing how their lives are um, compromised will help you have a stronger resolve to not go back to that person. Um, then oh, um, this is a great time to rediscover your hobbies to find some new interests because you're going to experience rumination so it will take you a while to completely disconnect your mind and emotions from that person um, and by you know by finding other things to do other interests and hobbies and go out in nature whatever you are distracting your mind and slowly slowly eroding that conditioning that came with the narcissistic abuse um, remember you deserve to live a life reflecting your values <laughs> your worth <laughs> and even though it might feel extremely difficult right now you can do this other people have done it that's why support groups are very helpful you can hear other people's experiences also educate yourself on the issue of narcissism on the issue of of um sorry my dog is walking around making noises <laughs> um educate yourself on how to heal from narcissistic abuse um and if you struggle right now yes i know you struggle right now you are not alone um, embrace this new chapter of your life you are stronger than you know and you'll find out as you're going through this process that you are um, if this video helped you please like and subscribe for more content like that in your comments let me know what else to address and and also share um, with your friends and thank you for watching um, I understand you're going through a hard time <laughs> and uh, I sympathize with you and click on the description box below I'll have uh, some links there for you um, and I wish you the best